Hey everybody, Gravy Train here with another episode of Gravy Training. So I haven't made a video in a while because I have been deciding or trying to figure out a game that I could do content for that we could get other people playing that had no real kind of barrier to entry or anything like that so that people could get started. And I've been wanting to play this game for a while, City of Heroes. Um, it's an old MMO. Um, I was playing it in the early 2000s, like 2003, 2004, 2005. And eventually it went, um, it was no longer profitable for them. I mean, it was a really great game, very well put together, very well balanced. The content was great, tons of content. Um, but it wasn't profitable for the company that um, built the game to host it anymore. And um, in like 2005 or 2006, something like that, they actually shut the servers down. In the meantime, uh, somebody got a hold of the source code at some point and private servers were, were put up and you could still play the game that way well that's that's sometimes good sometimes bad uh sometimes you'll you'll put a lot of energy into a game like that and then the developers will see it and say no we don't want you doing that blah 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 well this one is a whole different story um there is still a strong community around this game and the developers actually gave license to the people hosting the game to host the game legitimately legally whatever else so it's not something that's just going to go away uh the game is is city of heroes um i've got um city of heroes homecoming is the one that is now uh completely free you do not have to pay for a subscription or anything like that you can play all the content do everything you could possibly want inside the game itself for free, no cost. Um, so this is one that um, I think could potentially uh, be something that the community could get into. I know a lot of people are not necessarily flush with cash. Um, this is truly a great game. There's a lot of depth to it. Um, I still, to this day, uh, like 20 years later, um, have been wanting to play this and when i heard the announcement that it was it was approved and everything like that yes i was i was excited so i went in started making a character and all that um you can search for coh homecoming or go to uh, forums.homecomingservers.com and that'd be where you're, you're here i'll put the link in the description uh, this shows or tells you what you need to do to download the launcher and set up an account and, and all that stuff. So um, there's even a Discord for it and, and stuff like that. So um, yeah, it's a great game and I'm going to walk you through kind of uh, some initial uh, details around the game and then what I'm going to probably do is do a few kind of instructional videos around uh, different aspects of the game understanding uh, different mechanics understanding how to do missions how to find your way around what different things are um, and eventually and then also I will be doing let's play so just kind of going through running missions um, things like that Basically, City of Heroes is a superhero and supervillain game. You can play as a hero, you can play as a villain, you can play as a villain turned hero, and you can play as a hero turned villain. Um, you can play on the same server, or like the, there on each server there is a hero side and a villain side, but you can play either way, and after a little bit of time you can move from one to the other. I've been playing as heroes just be, or as hero on the hero side just because I think it's easier to get around the cities and things like that on the hero side. But, I mean, who knows where things will go. Um, so, without any more preamble, 
let me switch over to the game and go from there. So this is the the loading screen or where you start. So I've already got my account, blah, blah, blah. I've got different characters. Uh, you can see here, like this one happens to be a villain, um, but I have here, the rest of these are all like heroes or anti-heroes, whatever. Um, let me go through just kind of a bit about talking about the, the game. So if you are creating a brand new hero, there's City of Heroes, Freedom, and City of Heroes going rogue. I recommend for now just staying with City of Heroes Freedom. Now that you can play a hero or a villain. Uh, going rogue is a kind of parallel storyline where you're a hero on the villain side or a villain on the hero side. And uh, there's some different quest lines and stuff like that. Uh, by the time you get to level 20, you can go to the back to a hero or a villain. But the difference is on, on City of Heroes going rogue, you only have 11 basic archetypes. Whereas opposed to City of Heroes Freedom, you can play as any. May not be a big deal at first, um, but I mean, you got options. Um, so let's uh, kind of talk through some of the stuff. Um, so this is uh, your origin. So you start out, you're choosing an origin. Now what your origin is, is how you got your superpowers. So science, if you did it through experimentation and like chemistry or physics or, or something like that, something science-y, that is going to be your science origin. And the, these origins matter because your powers can be augmented by what's called enhancements. And the enhancements all map to one of the origins, or sometimes two of the origins. Uh, so choosing this is mostly a flavor thing. Um, not super important. It doesn't change your gameplay, excuse me, experience at all. Um, it is purely a, a kind of flavor thing. But it will maybe drive some of the missions you get and stuff like that. So there's science, mutation, think X-Men. Um, or um, any any sort of like accidental mutation that happened um, you could have been gene edited it could have been just been evolution whatever that's what the mutation uh, origin is you've got magic so think dr strange think iron fist um on the the dc side think um Oh, I'm, I don't even know. I'm, can't, I'm drawing a blank on the DC side. Think like Swamp Thing. Think um, uh, Constantine, uh, Zatanna, things like that. Um, on the technology, think Tony Stark. So it's not science. He hasn't made himself more powerful or made himself into a hero, his own body but he has the technology to make the Iron Man suits and things like that. Or um, it could be argued like uh, uh, some other heroes like um, Clint Barton, Hawkeye, could potentially be technology or could be natural, which natural is the last one. And this is like Batman. This is... Um, uh, Captain America, well, Captain America would be science origin, uh, just for example. Like, the Hulk would be mutation. Natural, Batman is the obvious big one. Um, mutation could also be, like, the Submariner or Aquaman. Uh, science could be, like, Green Lantern, um, things like that. Um, technology, Iron Man, it could be Nova. Um Star-Lord, probably technology, things like that. So that's what your origins are. Just for the sake of the video, I'm going to choose science and go on to the next thing. So here, you do not have to make a decision like this. This will help guide you. But these are kind of the general categories of heroes that you can be. And by choosing one of these types, um, on the next screen, your actual archetype, archetype 
Um, this will the play style will help you choose an archetype. Uh, now the arc the play styles are going to be like tank. That's uh, somebody that can take tons of hits, um, deal out a bunch of damage. Not necessarily the maximum damage, but they can take tons of hits. Somebody that's invulnerable. Luke Cage would be an example of a tank. Um, Superman is a tank. Um, things like that. Melee damage is going to be your brawler types. So Iron Fist would be melee damage. Uh, Daredevil, melee damage. Range damage would be the, the types that are blowing stuff up via guns, via um, like energy blasts from their hands or eye lasers or things like that. Um, even um, like Hawkeye, range damage using a arrow with trick shots or the green arrow or whatever that's all range damage crowd control is going to be manipulating enemies uh buffing and debuffing or debuffing enemies buffing your allies um lot like immobilizing foes putting foes to sleep stunning foes uh things like that that's going to be crowd control um character along those lines might be like scarlet witch um although she's kind of more of a hybrid between a crowd control and a, and a, a range damage um dr strange might have a bunch of aspects of crowd control again he can also do damage stuff like that um but just kind of in general the, these are are kind of uh, very strategic control based classes support is going to be your healers uh, things like that. Uh, there's not a ton of, of heroes like this, I guess, in comic books because they tend to be more support type characters, but support might be like Forge from the X-Men. Um, it could be like just a, a doctor or something like that, or uh, Raven might be a support class uh, because she can do healing and stuff like that. Um, so that's support. And then pets are classes that are characters that rely on other, other creatures to, to either do their damage or supplement their damage. So um, there are, well, well, we'll go to the archetypes because those are going to kind of define this a lot more. So a blaster is one of the range damage archetypes. They have, and you can see kind of here, they have decent survivability depending on, like you can have a, they call them a, a blapper because it's like a blaster and a scrapper. Um, but there are some that can do high melee damage. Most of them or all of them can do high range damage. They get some crowd control and a little bit of support and potentially pets depending on which, control, which power set you actually take. So, for example, for powers with a blaster, you've got this big list of primary power sets. And these are be where your, your main kind of DPS comes from. Archery, assault rifle, energy rifle, dark blast, pistols, electric blast, blah, blah, blah. All these different types of things. Each of these has different characteristics. Like, uh, for example... Um, archery is going to have a higher, is going to have a bonus to accuracy. It's going to all obviously be built around like bow and arrow type things, trick shot, that type of stuff. Uh, assault weapon, assault rifle is another very accurate weapon. Uh, whereas like dark blast, when you hit, hit opponents with uh, dark blast, you're going to reduce their chance to hit against you, reduce their accuracy against you. So there's kind of uh, different uh, built-in pros and cons and things like that. Uh, Fire Blast does a lot of area of effect, a lot of damage over time. Psychic Blast gets past a lot of resistances. So the damage, it's not as high a damage, but it doesn't get blocked as much. Things like that. So that's going to be your Blaster. The Blaster is a hero archetype. The Brute... Um, think the Hulk, um, think, um, Abomination, think, uh, Rhino, um, the big, I think Chitara, um, 
here are villains. It's a villain archetype, but you can play a hero as a brute. So the, the brute is going to get offensive power sets as its primary and defensive power sets as its secondary. It's going to be very melee, uh, melee damage oriented, not range damage, very little range. Um, but they're going to get up close, personal. They're going to um, be, deal out a lot of damage. Also, the more consistently they're dealing damage, the there there's a meter that fills up that their damage increases the more often they're they're dealing damage it's like they go into a bloodlust um for example their power sets are like battle axe broadsword claws dark melee like a lot of the blaster things just kind of turned into melee versions uh super strength war base blah 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 um say we pick one of these and then look at secondary powers oh i gotta pick okay so you pick a fighting style and then these are all the powers that you would get as you're leveling up so staff fighting i might choose like precise strike and then i choose my secondary powers and these are defensive powers for the brute so different types of armor or auras or regeneration or super reflexes or, or things like that so that is the Brute. Controller is a really good class, but it's not one that I would suggest people start with unless you really, basically unless you've got friends that you're going to be playing with a lot. Um, controllers are difficult because their primary power set is a control version of a blaster ability. So they'll have like fire control or mind control or darkness etc this is like locking people down um like temporarily converting them to your side or invoking fear things like that it's going to basically lock down opponent or lock down enemies so that you can take them out but they don't do a lot of damage it's mostly the damage is kind of secondary to their control abilities um so say we we pick this and then they're secondary powers are the primary powers for support characters like uh, defenders and things like that so like empathy is all about pure healing force field is about protecting or keeping damage from happening to begin with um radiation all about um uh, radiant aura is uh, you heal some wounds and do damage and that sort of thing so the controller is is a little bit difficult to play it can be very rewarding very good in groups but they can be a little slow to level up because they don't do as much damage corruptors so corruptors are controllers on the, the villain side controllers are heroes corruptor is the equivalent to a controller on the villain side um, except that they get they still get a, a primary that is a blaster type offensive ranged power so we'll say like beam rifle we'll do a charge shot and then they get a domination type as secondary so this could be like uh well i guess these are support powers or whatever too so they're they're kind of control kind of um a bit support that sort of thing um, again a little bit of a, a complicated class to try to play um defender is a pure support character um it is a hero uh this is one that you got powers like um these are all primary support powers so Again, force field, like your primary purpose of your character is to put, put force fields and keep damage from getting through to your party. So instead of worrying about healing so much, you keep them from taking any damage to begin with. Like kinetics is about like, okay, changing the, the kinetic energy that a, that a uh, enemy has and slowing them down or uh, making your stuff do more damage, that sort of thing. So say we pick that, and then they have a blaster ability as their secondary so that they can still do some damage. 
Um, dominator. Um, I actually have a dominator. So a dominator is control and assault powers. Assault powers being like the blaster. Um, so this one, uh, let's look, kind of look at their power set. So yeah, you've got all your kind of control stuff. Primary, so you do plant control and and as uh, and then you've got assault. So this is very similar to. I'm actually not even positive the difference between the corruptor and the dominator, other than their kind of class abilities are a little bit different, but the power sets are, are very similar. So Dominator is one, um, or Corruptor. Those are probably easier to play than a controller, but they're all kind of control things. Like if we come back here and we say crowd control, I mean, controller and Dominator are gonna be the ones that are available. Um, uh, come back here and everything will be back here. Uh, Dominator Mastermind. This is a very unique class and very cool. Um, it's a villain class. Uh, you are going to be like uh, most of Batman's villains are, uh, or many of Batman's villains are masterminds. The Joker, Penguin, the Riddler, uh, all the ones that they've got their goons and stuff like that. A, a mob boss, uh, whatever. So that's what Mastermind has. They've got pet powers. So they get like, okay, you can have beasts or demons or mercenaries or necromancy or ninjas or robotics or thugs. Um, thugs would be like gang members. Robotics is robots. Uh, ninjas. Necromancy is zombies and stuff like that. You'll get multiple... Um, multiple pets. Eventually you get a total of, I think, six. You get three level or three tier ones, two tier twos, and one tier three. But you don't get all of them until like later on. You start with just one. Um, I have a, a hero that's at like level 12 or something like that, that has um, three total pets. It's got two level ones and, or two tier ones and one tier two. This is a lot of fun. You sit back, you've got your, your pets, you can control your pets, tell them what to do. Um, so we'll say here, we'll go mercenaries. And then you've got blaster type abilities, uh, assault type abilities as your secondary. Um, some of these can be kind of support. Some of them are kind of assault. Um, like uh, trick arrow, stuff like that. You're going to be kind of doing some crowd control or, or support. Uh, but for example, I had a, a really high level, uh, I think I had a level 50 um, mastermind that was the army guys and force fields. And basically, I almost never had to even heal my guys. That by the time I was done, um, I was able to, to go in and, and do a lot of stuff. These guys are great especially solo, but they're not bad in groups either. So Mastermind is fun. Again, this is a villain archetype. Scrapper. Uh, Scrapper is a melee brawler, but it's a DPS type brawler. Whereas the the tanker or the brute, um, and I think tanker is a little further down, yeah. Um, it's more of like, instead of somebody that can take tons of hits, it's somebody that can deal tons of damage. Think um, Daredevil, think Batman, think uh, Iron Fist. Um, heroes like that are going to be scrappers. They're not stealthy scrappers because those are stalkers. Um, and I think maybe Sentinels? No. It's Stalker is the big stealth one. Um, yeah, but Scrapper is great. Um, what my one of my favorite heroes that I've ever played was a Scrapper. I it was the spines and super reflexes. Absolutely loved it. These guys can take on lots and lots especially after you get into like the teens and 20s or 30s on your level they can take out a lot of stuff on their own this is probably one of if not the best solo class 
that you can pick. They do great damage, especially great single target damage. They're they're boss killers. Like they will just go up and tank the ever living crap out of a boss or an arch villain or whatever. Like they are really good at solo. I usually crank the difficulty way up on missions when I'm running as a scrapper, things like that. Um, Sentinel, I've never played a Sentinel, so it says it's a powerful mid-range combatant with moderate protective powers and protection against controller. Uh, sturdier than a blaster, it also uses superior perception to quickly identify threats and explosive vulnerabilities. So this, I'm imagining, is a combination of, of blasting. Well, let's see what the power sets are. So it's assault powers as their primary. And it is armor. So these are the tanker defensive power sets. So yeah, or the tanker, they're, they're just the defensive power sets, the defensive melee type power sets. So this is going to be um, actually kind of a cool combo here. Um, yeah, you've got your, well, of course it's screwing up. You got your primary being sort of blaster type stuff and your secondary being scrapper type stuff. So that's what a sentinel is. I'm assuming that this is a hero type, but I'm not positive. I don't even know if this one was in the game before. Like they've done a lot of updates and everything to it. Stalker is going to be... High DPS, especially from stealth, this is your rogue type archetype. So, um, Ra's al Ghul would be a stalker type. Um, obviously, anybody in the, the Hand or the Legion of Shadows or the League of Shadows or things like that. These are going to be your stalker types. Power sets are going to be the melee assault power sets. Say we pick one, and then armor stuff from here, but they're going to also kind of get, um, what can I not do? Incompatible power sets, weird. Um, yeah, okay, so like stone armor, your first one is going to be hide, or in, apparently, yeah, your first power is going to be hide under any of these. So they kind of change them up a little bit, but you get kind of built-in stealth. One thing to note, too, is these are not the only powers that your hero can get. So um, I'll kind of touch on some of those in a bit. Um, this video is already at a half an hour, but I think the intro is just gonna, the introduction is just going to be a little bit longer as I go through some basics. So hopefully you're still with me and, and interested. Uh, Tanker is the last of the normal type classes. This is your Superman, your... Um, your Luke Cage, your, your even like Aquaman, probably a tanker, uh, Wonder Woman, probably a tanker, maybe a scrapper. Um, I mean, there's kind of some blurred lines as far as that goes, but they are super, they're the most survivable. They do good damage, but it's mostly, um, it's not as big as a, as a scrapper is. Um, they also get a lot more area of effect stuff. They also get the ability to like taunt and things like that. So they're going to want to have every everybody, all the enemies attacking them to make it easy on the support classes to keep them alive. The rest of these, these last four are prestige classes. Back in the day, you used to have to have a level 50 villain to get one of the Arachnos classes, and you had to have a level 50 hero to get one of the um, Peacebringer or Warshade. Peacebringer and Warshade are aliens that have kind of unique sort of powers. They're a mix of support and damage and control and stuff like that. Kind of same with, with Warshade. Um, Arachnos soldiers. Arachnos is one of the main like villain um, organizations in the game. So these are soldiers that have kind of moved up into this rank. I've never played one of these, either one of these, so I'm not super familiar. Um, but they're worth testing out. So 
Uh, those are all of your archetypes. So if we go back out of this, those are all of them, all 15 you can get as City of Heroes Freedom. Going Rogue, again, you can get um, all but four, probably all but the Prestige classes, I would imagine. So that is, oh, okay, so we get into to powers, whatever. Um, then you can pick your body. So we'll go through the rest of this, and then I'll stop this video and kind of come back to some of the other stuff in another one. So here, um, you can pick male, female, or, or huge. So like a Hulk-type character or a Luke Cage-type character or something like that. And you can adjust height. You can adjust the physique, make them more lean and wiry or more bulky. Shoulders, waist, hips, legs. Um, same type of thing here. Of course, you can move the chest on a woman, blah, 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 because that's how video games work. Um, yeah, and then costumes. And you can pick... Okay, this is a bad... So let's just pick a master and come back here to costume. So you can start... They have this massive list of templates to start from. You can use this as a starting point or you can skip it entirely. There are many, 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 many costume sets. And then you can go in and, and customize kind of everything. Uh, so helmets, you can see all of that changing. Like there are, there's just tons and tons. Upper body, robes, suits, like the list here, th these are all based on the upper body types. Um, and then different variations. You can have all your colors, your skin color, lower body, auras, uh, things like that. Like, whoo, now I got all this smoke coming out or digital stuff coming over, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then finally... Say we come to powers. Then you can actually go in and you can make, you can have multiple costumes. So this is just your starting costume and you can change the costumes in game at any point. So not super big a deal, but you can go in here and actually customize individual powers. This not getting me. Okay, well, in theory, you can customize individual powers. But, okay, so here my secondary power set. Maybe it's because none of these have effects. I can change, like, this one power to be red and purple instead of the other. So when you activate this ability, the colors are different. I mean, this is the level of customization that you have. And then a name, blah, 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 blah. And I'm not going to go ahead and create this character, but at this point you would start and go into the game. So, yeah, let's take a look at some of my heroes. So, for example, um, we'll do this guy. Uh, this is a brute. Actually, you know, we'll go with my scrapper. He's on the villain side, but I'm just going to show you a few things in-game. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to wrap it up here because there's a lot of stuff to cover yet. I'll start covering in the game, go over the user interface, how to kind of set things up, customize things. Um, but there's, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are excited. Let me know if you're interested in trying the game out. Um, also, I will be posting a Discord link very soon. Um, I've got things set up, and I'm finally ready to open that up to the public. So, yeah, let me know what you think, and look forward to having some new videos coming out. Have a great day.